kind of magic spit. Oh, hey, today we're looking at the labyrinth, Mao no Make You, based on the 1986 cult classic film by Jim Henson. Some other computer adventure games based on Labyrinth were also released for the PC-88, MSX2, Apple IIe, and Commodore 64, but here we're looking at the Famicom version, a unique top-down action-adventure published by Tokuma Shoten in 1987 and developed by Atlas, one of their earliest releases. This version was never officially released outside of Japan, but luckily a really well-done translation patch exists, so we can better enjoy this brain-bending experience. Following along the movie's plot, you play as Sarah in a quest to rescue your baby brother Toby from Jareth the Goblin King, who gives you 13 hours to do so, with a timer that also acts as a kind of health meter. With very heavy gauntlet vibes, you have to track down the 12 pieces of the key to the Goblin City and eventually make your way into Jareth's castle. Right off the bat, our worm friend tells us not to take anything for granted as you'll soon find the labyrinth messing with your head with some crazy screen wrapping stuff and other disorienting trickery. Add a steady flow of enemies that will stunlock you and reduce your ticking time even further, and you'll quickly see that a challenging quest lies ahead. Oh, man. Luckily, you run into a few friends along the way. That worm will update you on what items you still need from a level, along with selling you some helpful stuff. The wise man will drop some not-so-subtle hints on where to head next, along with trading offensive and defensive upgrades for coins found throughout the game. And you can also collect hearts to eventually be able to summon your pals Hoggle, Ludo, and Didymus. But man, Hoggle has seen better days. Despite this, you'll still need some strong resolve to push through the game's high difficulty curve as you're immediately tossed into an ocean of confusion and unforgiving combat with one single life, no continues. Pepper in some random Jareth appearances where he pops up like Jason Voorhees, and be prepared for some anxious moments and inevitable heartbreak as you learn the ins and outs of the maze and begin to memorize how to progress without wasting too much of your precious 13 hours. At first, I was pretty nervous to try and get through this without any hints or guides. But with patience, you can definitely start getting more efficient with fending off enemies and remembering how to get all the keys. By the end, I had a lot of fun and felt very satisfied when I finally rescued Toby. As a big fan of Henson's work in general, I really appreciated all the attention to detail in including so many things from the movie. Locations like the Bog of Eternal Stench, and legit chiptune renditions of the film's music. And of course, the creepy ass Fire Gang shows up. And while it was a cool idea to include these three as your companions, I was a little bummed out at how unnecessary they ended up being, and often more of a hindrance. He's gonna screw me over. Hoggle. Hoggle. Maybe there are some tricks to using them effectively, but more often than not, they would be slowing me down or just disappearing instantly anyway. So this was a pretty good game for 1987, and I had to wonder why it never came out in the West. This was news to me, but Labyrinth was not as successful at the time of its release as I thought it was. It didn't recover its budget in the box office, and was generally critically panned. It was definitely re-evaluated more positively and started garnering a cult following several years after Jim Henson's passing in 1990, but by that point this game wouldn't look so hot sitting next to other top-down action-adventure games like Crystallis or Star Tropics. Luckily, Labyrinth had enough overseas success in Japan that Takuma Shoten went ahead and published this unique version that aimed to stay a bit more faithful to the source material than its home PC counterparts. Otherwise, I'm curious to hear your thoughts if you've already tried Labyrinth or let me know if you decide to give it a go. As always, thanks for watching.